guys, welcome back. It's Jen with Happy Humble Home. So today I'm going to give y'all a quick garden update and some other canning stuff that I'm doing. It's been a hot minute since I've done that. So before we jump into that, go though, make sure that you go ahead and click subscribe and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And be sure to ring that little notification bell so that way you get notified of any videos that I upload here on Happy Humble Home. All right, so let's go ahead and get the garden video started. Kind of see the garden here behind me you can probably hear the canner in the background and you can see it's doing pretty good there's a couple things that i've noticed that i want to talk to y'all about my garden this season real quick but i'm going to turn you around and give y'all a closer view and i'll explain it kind of more as i get closer to my veggies. all right y'all so here we have our tomatoes on these rows these two rows are beans these two rows are bush beans as well and then we have a row that has mostly peppers with the um, okra down at the very far end but one thing I wanted to point out that I found was really interesting was that these first two rows of beans right here um, were beans that we had bought at the store that were bush beans this year and planted them. Okay, these two rows right here were bush beans. Well, okay, let me rephrase that. This row right here, it was entirely bush beans from last season that I had seed saved. And then this row over here is, I'd say, probably about a third of the way was actually beans that I had saved from last year as well. So, and then the rest were some other, like, I call them yellow green beans because they're bush bean, but they're a yellow bush bean. And I just think green beans when I say beans. But those are some of the yellow bush beans at the end of this fourth row right here. But I found that really interesting that these two were seeds that we had just bought this year and incidentally a couple of them were pole beans as well that I had to pull up because you could see the trellises running off and or the you could see where they were pole beans instead of bush beans so I, I pulled those up but you can see where like the rows they just haven't had as much and then these are very very lush and kind of really together and I haven't necessarily worried about thinning them out because they're still producing really well and some of the smaller plants like you can see right there like that little plant I'll go pull him off and go ahead and pull him up since he's kind of already looking a little sad there and yeah thankfully most of the birds stayed out of our garden so if you remember I had the little tinsel like one of my friends called them a tinsel tree at the beginning of the rows kind of halfway down and on the other end and I really think that helped keep the birds out of my garden because I'm pretty sure that's what kept getting my beans last year when they were just little bitty sprouts and that seems to help help really well my tomatoes I did find some army worms on them so my army worms have gotten some of my tomatoes this year which i'm not really happy about but you can see there's a lot i've already got probably about a gallon and a half that have in the freezer getting ready so that way once i harvest everything at once i can can them all at once and then we have the other small different variety those are all brandy wine ones i believe that's the name brandy wine or brandy wine something like that something brandy or those now, I don't remember what these are. A friend gave me these and I don't remember if she told me. But those are a different variety for sure. You can see the beans are doing well. <laughs> this okra plant, you can see how sturdy it is. This is an okra plant that I just planted from a seed that I had seed saved last year. So when we planted our whole garden, I just put the seed down. I didn't bother seed starting it or anything like that. And you can see it's doing really well so I think technically a lot of people already have had more okra than we have but she's going strong and you can see she's got quite a bit of growth and we have harvested a couple okra already but I mean it's very sturdy so I just find that funny because I don't seed start in which is really tough this one is apparently a penguin pepper and y'all, I have no idea. I just thought it was interesting by the name. And 
it just keeps getting bigger like this, but I don't, like, these are the little bitty. I don't know if I need to do something else or just kind of let it go because it seems like it's very, very healthy. And there's lots of little flowers and peppers. So I don't really know. Maybe y'all can help me out on that one because it was just intriguing. And those uh, did not top my peppers, as you can tell. So that one I didn't need to. This one I didn't, but it's doing well. That one I didn't either, and it's doing well. But I guess my bell peppers absolutely have to. That's a sweet jalapeno. Or not a sweet jalapeno, sorry. A sweet banana. Or banana pepper. Those are my jalapeno plants. So, yeah. And then, of course, we have my taters over there starting to die. There's down. also our little strawberries. You can see some basil back there, too. But we've been able to get a decent little harvest from them. And they're starting to produce quite a bit. And they keep sending out these little runners but you can see we've got some berries hiding down in there so they're doing pretty well let's check on the beans real quick yep we're still good yep they're still good okay so that's kind of where the garden is setting um we haven't gotten just a whole lot of rain so i'm coming out here about every three or so days and letting the sprinkler just kind of run on it for a good little while and i think that's helping some of my tomato plants are still very, very little, as you can tell here. But they were also a lot smaller than that when I actually got them here. Uh, now, the y'all have seen me do several years worth of the tomatoes, not tomatoes, taters before. And it's always done pretty well. I have usually just buy the seed taters, start those. I'll try to save some from the previous harvest if I can and use that as a seed starter. It's not always, or as a seed tater, it's not always happening. But this year I, I wanted to try something different. So if you remember earlier, I posted about how I went to the produce section and I just got organic taters. And I looked and I got ones that were already sprouting a little bit. And so I planted those. I don't think they're doing as well. Obviously I haven't harvested them yet and time will tell, but I will say this though, from the seed, when I use the seed taters before the past couple seasons, my plants never flowered at all. Now, when I use these organic ones, those plants flowered, but the plants have been looking a little more scraggly all throughout the season. Like this is probably the best that they've looked, but you can see how this one is still flowering and this one just really kind of popped up not too long ago. Some of them has already died off more. Some of my buckets didn't even come up with anything. So I'm kind of curious, like the ones that are dead, I'll probably end up going ahead and harvesting those probably this week. And we'll kind of see how that looks. Cause I'm not quite so sure how that's gonna look, you know, cause in some ways they've done better than the seed taters and they flowered like they're supposed to versus other ways they haven't. So I don't really know what to think. If y'all have ever done that, let me know how that went for you. Sorry if that's called that camera may be loud in the background, sorry. Um, so yeah, you'll have to let me know what you think if y'all have ever tried that method because it definitely seems very interesting. I'm gonna get my little bow target here. Have a seat on my bow target while I talk to y'all. Um, and then also, as far as what is in the canner, is I'm currently canning up some beans. So I'm also trying a different method with these as well, which is why I haven't necessarily posted a specific video to canning anything really specific yet, because I'm still trying to figure out the different processes and the way we like it and all. Um, but this way, I've when I usually can beans, which obviously the pressure can. I usually do the whole rinse the beans or sort them, let them dry, let them soak overnight, then let them cook for 30 minutes, then jar them up and can and do the pressure canning process. This time I'm going to, I tried to just do it from dry beans. So there was sorted beans and then I just poured like half a cup into a pint sized jar, filled the rest with water 
and put them in the canner. So definitely a lot easier, I think. And I'm kind of curious to see how much water cooks out because one thing that I've noticed with the other beans was when they're partially already cooked like that, even if I don't fill the jar all the way up and I do maybe a half to three fourths of beans and fill the rest with water during the process, during the processing time, more of the water would cook out than I would like. So they're not completely submerged under water like I would, or in the liquid as much as I would hope. But every time I've used them to cook, it hasn't been a big deal. And it hasn't really been any kind of issue. So I'm kind of curious to see if just putting like a half a cup of dry beans and the rest with water, I want to see how much they'll expand and how much water is left once they start cooling off and everything. So I will keep y'all updated on that in this video. So we'll elapse some time and y'all can see that. But that's pretty much it for right now. Um, if you watched my short, you've seen that we get some school stuff coming in. So I'll be posting little like what I call happy mail videos just kind of showing tidbits of the curriculum that we will be getting in the mail soon. And then once I have all three of the grades that I need um, curriculum, I will post their specific grade curriculums videos. If you haven't seen those, be sure, I've already got some up on my channel, so be sure to go, sorry y'all, be sure to go look at that. If you haven't already, I'll link that little or you can go to my channel and look for the curriculum playlist there. And so that wraps it up portion wise. So we're gonna fast forward to when the beans are ready to show y'all how they turn in. Overnight, it hasn't been 24 hours yet since I've got these out of my canner, but you can see here how these beans turned out. They definitely have a lot more water in them than what this one does which is this is the one that i canned back in june you can see there like this is the one where i soaked the beans overnight and then just filled up the jar part way and put water in and you can see how there's like hardly any water in there so i don't really know if there's like maybe too much in these now i only had one that didn't seal properly but the true test will come and you can see some of them don't have as much like that one looks pretty good these right here have a little more, but again, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. So we shall see. The true test will come when we actually like cook with them and all. So y'all can probably maybe let me know in the comments which method you prefer and if you've tried the other methods or not, but that's how just using, putting just like half a cup of dried beans in here and then filling the rest with water. And then this is actually soaking them overnight, cooking them down for like 30 minutes, and then drawing them up and pressure canning. And you can see the difference there was up there. So, all right guys, so that pretty much wraps up kind of like our little garden update there. And then you've seen the way that the beans um, finished canning up. And, oh, also I did, one of my friends, one of my neighbor friends was talking about the penguin pepper. And she looked it up and apparently that is like as big as the penguin pepper gets what I showed you in the video and when they're fully ripe and everything they're supposed to turn a red like a reddish orange red color and actually if you look on the very bottom of the plant like hidden under it all there is one that has already turned like a reddish orange color so yeah apparently they're only like a couple centimeters big so we shall see. I'm gonna find it very interesting to like maybe try to dehydrate them and grind them up into powder or maybe depending how many there are if you could like candy them like you can jalapeno peppers. I don't really know. So if y'all know any more about the penguin peppers be sure to leave it in the comment section below. If y'all have any questions or anything leave it in the comment section below and thank y'all for watching and I will check in with y'all later.